My name is Scott Nielsen. I'm a Director of Product Management here at Microfocus. And in a few moments, my colleague Gail Wilson is going to take you through a quick demo of the new features arriving in our Visual COBOL 8.0 release. Our COBOL extensions for Visual Studio Code form part of a collection of modern COBOL development tools that set the standard for COBOL development. It includes industry-leading integrations into Visual Studio and Eclipse, including Visual Studio 2022, static code analysis tools that assist with a variety of tasks, such as providing up-to-date documentation and impact analysis, COBOL refactoring tools that help reduce application complexity and tackling monolithic applications, and deployment options for Java, the latest .NET platforms, and API enablement tools. Following on from our first release of Visual Studio Code, our engineering teams have been hard at work to bring more features to support COBOL developers. So it's now time to hand things over to Gail, who's going to take you through a quick tour of what's available in this release of Visual Studio Code for Microfocus COBOL. So I'm Gail Wilson. I'm a developer working on the Visual COBOL and Enterprise Developer products. In this video, I'm going to give an overview of the features provided by the Microfocus COBOL and Enterprise extensions for Visual Studio Code. The Visual Studio Code is a lightweight code editor, so if I launch VS Code from my desktop, it only takes a couple of seconds to start up and it's already ready to use. If I open the extensions view and select Microfocus, you'll see the Microfocus COBOL and Microfocus Enterprise extensions listed. If I click on these, you will see README information outlining the functionality that the extensions provide, as well as links to the full documentation for the extensions. And these can be used on either Windows or Linux. So it's a simple click to install and just takes a few seconds for that to be installed. I've already installed these extensions, so all I need to do in order to be able to use them is to open a folder containing some code that they recognize. So if I select a folder containing some COBOL code, this folder just has a single source file and a batch file to build that particular program. And once the extension activates, the source file will be colorized. There we go. And you'll see that because I am using the extension and have 8.0 installed, on the bottom right hand corner, it shows that I have a Microfocus language server running, which is new in 8.0. And one of, the, one of the features that that provides is an outline view of the program. So if I scroll through that outline view, it shows all the data items and how they're defined and the number of usages of each of those items and the procedure division and a list of the sections and paragraph names in the procedure division. And I can navigate around the code by clicking on items in the outline view. You can also see here that there's information included to show the number of references on that particular section. And also if I hover over the name, then it pops up information on that particular item. And on a data item, I will get the definition of the item and the number of references. If I right click on that data item, I can peek those references. And you can see that it displays a peak view and a list of all of the references. And again, I can navigate around the code and look at the, ref look at the use of that data item. If I want to rename that item, 
I could change it, for example, from game to game X. And you can see below that text box, there's an option to either rename or press Shift and Enter to preview the rename. So I'll select the latter. And you can see that there is a preview list shown detailing all the changes that will be made to that source file. And if I click on each of those items, you can see that I get a preview showing what the, the source currently looks like and what it'll look like once it's changed. And that'll, I can select each of those items and navigate my way around using that. So that's really useful. However, in this case, I will not change the item. I can also, if I enter some information here, if I press A, you'll see that I get a drop down list including some text based suggestions provided by VS Code itself, context sensitive information provided by the language server, and also some information on snippets that the extension includes to make potential changes to your code. So if I cancel that, you can see that as a result of that change that I've made, there are now errors in the, in the code indicated by these squiggles underneath the, uh, the lines in question. And also the problems view has, has been populated containing information about those errors. So I can navigate directly to those errors, errors from the problems list and I can view information about the error that's that's occurred by hovering over the item. And that's all done in the background by the language server as the code's being edited. So there's no build required in order to get that information. If I cancel that change, remove it, then you'll see that the problems view has now been cleared and the error squiggles have been removed and all, that's all been done automatically in the background. So having, having made the changes that I want to make to my code, I probably now want to build that. So in order to build, I go to the terminal menu and say configure tasks. I will create a tasks JSON file from a template and select others because I want to run an arbitrary external command just to execute my batch file. So that creates a tasks JSON file just with some placeholder information. I need to make some changes to that now to run my batch file. So I've just pasted in the information that I need. So the type is a COBOL shell, which is just a standard shell, but with the COBOL environment set so that I can run the COBOL compiler. The command is my batch file and it's a build. And the as default just means that it will run automatically without prompting me to select an option. The problem matcher will identify any errors in the output from the build and populate the problems view so that I can navigate directly to the problem in the source. Now there shouldn't be any errors in this particular demo program. So if I now save that, if I go back to the terminal menu and say run build task, so that now runs the batch file which executes the COBOL command to compile and that's completed successfully and my folder now contains tic-tac.int and tic-tac.idy. So having built my program, I can now debug. So if I select the run menu and say start debugging, so I'm asked to select a debugger because I haven't configured anything for this particular folder and it's suggesting COBOL native, which is correct. So I'll select that and that creates a launch.json file. And I just need to specify the program name that I want to debug, which will be, which will be tic-tac.int. So if I add that in and change and save the file rather. Now, if I 
go back to the start debugging option. The debugger launches. And it's paused the execution on the first statement in the program. And you can see that the locals view contains char, which is the item on the current statement. I can add that to the watch window if I choose to do so. I can also add other things to the watch window. So I'll add question. I can set breakpoints. Um, so in addition to the standard functionality, there's also watch points and program breakpoints, which are microfocus specific. If I add a watch point on moves, that will pause the execution anytime the value of the moves data item changes. So I think I've set everything I want to do here initially. So now if I continue, you'll see that the debugger has paused on the statement move zero to moves because that's modifying the moves data item. So it's hit, hit this watch point. If I now continue again, it hits my break point that I'd set. And if I step, then you can see that the watch window has been modified to show the updated value of question. And so all of the functionality that you would expect from the debugger is present and available inside VS Code. And that concludes the demo of build, of edit, build, and debug in VS Code. Well, thank you, Gail, for that overview. And if it's wet your appetite to try it out for yourself, you can find our extensions for Visual Studio Code in the marketplace. Even if you don't have a Microfocus Cobol product installed, you'll still get some smart editing support for Cobol free of charge. But if you do have Visual Cobol 8.0 installed or a trial, you'll see a whole host of new features light up that Gail demonstrated today.